Music is the soundtrack of daily life in Soweto. Many youngsters learn how to sing four-part harmony before they can read or write. I mean, music in Soweto, wow. It's, it's, it's been a healing process um, because music, we sing when we're happy, we sing when we're sad, we sing when we want to just enjoy our talent, really. It sounds almost effortless, but behind the music is a remarkable story of hard work and hope. And few embody that more than Matapello Matabani. I started off singing in church and, you know, that's where you heard all different types of music, choral music from different age groups and that's how we all communicated. So to me, music has, has always been a part of my life and I can't imagine life without it. I just go into the message of the song and live the song, really. You can feel this sort of uh, instinct. I, where does this come from? Amazing. But, but she's almost got it more than anybody else in, in the room. What will I do? Not so long ago, a powerful voice like this may not have been heard beyond church or family gatherings. Performing on the international stage was a wild, unachievable dream. But now, extraordinary opportunities are dawning, thanks to an amazing project and a remarkable woman. To tell my troubles to you know, I mean, she saw the talent that was in Soweto and for her to bring out that music, that, that talent, that, that is just incredible um, that she's done that and that sacrifice that she's done it, because, um, I mean, nobody told her to do it. What will I do? For 90. Yes. Rosemary Nolden is an acclaimed musician who put her own career on hold to pour her energy and experience into the young musicians of the township. For almost 20 years, this has been her life, a music school called Busgade. It's just a, a, an abundance of riches, really. Somebody, somewhere up there, decided that I was going to be the recipient of this huge gift, really. And I know I moan and groan and complain, but actually, you know, I, I am so fortunate that this happened. It all started in 1992 when Rosemary and her musical colleagues in London went busking to raise thousands of pounds for struggling musicians in Soweto. And then somebody said, you know, you'd be very silly to send that money rather wisely out to South Africa at the moment. It's not a very good idea. Why don't you go? Buscade eventually started in 1997 and Rosemary has been on loan to South Africa ever since. It was supposed to be, yeah, it was meant to be, yeah. Whether it was the right thing or the wrong thing, I mean... You don't get another go. <laughs> you don't get another go, no.
Buscade provides music classes to children in Soweto who would otherwise miss out. The project has unearthed remarkable young musicians. It's so exciting and, it, and it's very moving actually. And then it becomes a sort of sharing thing because you're both working together and it's subtle and it's unspoken and it's magic. Most of the children arrive never having heard classical music. Some sit on the sidelines for months waiting to be accepted to the program. What happens next is an awakening. And that has happened time and time again in Buscade, which is really extraordinary because, you know, I, I, I always say this, we're in one tiny corner of Soweto, we're in a suburb, and we've got this little tiny catchment of children coming in. And amongst those children, the majority are talented. First thing, can you feel the speed? It went one, two, three, one, two, three, and you went wow. Now one generation is teaching another. So if I give you a speed, keep the speed. 32-year-old Laseco is one of the original Buscade students. It's easier if you leave your fingers down. Started as a little one, and now I'm helping the little ones in here as well. So it's just an amazing feeling. Calculate what you have already and see what remains. It will take up to 12 years of practice for the youngsters to reach an elite level. For those who stick with it, there are big opportunities ahead. Ladies, ah, the answer is not in the CV. If you've got the dedication, the will, and you're determined to do it, anything is possible. Not just musically, but anything is possible. Soweto can still be a very tough place to grow up for some. During the depths of apartheid, it was infamous for poverty and violence. It was an era when young people risked their lives for freedom. In June 1976, Police opened fire on thousands of schoolchildren protesting against the racist regime. So, yeah, I mean, when I see those pictures and everything, I feel, wow, would I have been able to do that if I was, you know, back then? I'm just very grateful of what they did, and I'm grateful that I didn't have to go through that. The story of 1976 is sacred here. The children of today are taught about the sacrifices of the past. But life in the township is changing, more than you can imagine. This is the first generation to come of age in Soweto with money and freedom to spare. Life is so secure, they go looking for adventure. Well, I mean, since I was born, <laughs> I think it's, it's changed dramatically. Um, sometimes for those, some people feel for the good, some people feel for the bad. This place says it all. The old cooling towers of Soweto's power station, once a grim presence overshadowing a troubled neighbourhood, and now a platform for the daring to take the plunge. So it is actually a, a place that a lot of things are happening. It's not what it used to be back in the, in the old days. Parts of Soweto now have all the trappings of middle-class suburbia, and it's no wonder. The size of South Africa's black middle class has doubled in the past 10 years. I mean, there's malls going around everywhere. We even have a, a square now here. It's got McDonald's and everything.
Every weekend, Soweto's young and rich come here to Villa Kazi Street. It was once the home of Nelson Mandela. Now it's a place to show off wealth. Economic figures show that black high income earners are outspending their white counterparts. It's not me. <laughs> it's not my type of thing. Um, I'm quite comfortable uh, with my little car and giving back to the community the way I do, um, socialising with people out there as well. So I'm OK, thanks. Today's young people in Soweto are growing up against the backdrop of opportunity, yet inequality. It's very different to when Busgade started in the 1990s. There were no phones, there were no iPods, none, none of this stuff. It's a horrible thing to say, the fact that they had nothing made it easier, but it did make what we were doing easier because all they wanted to do, they virtually lived at Ruskade. That's all they wanted to do. So it was very straightforward. After all the work that we've done, what are we going to do about it? Times have changed, but Rosemary Nolden's expectations have not. I mean, you know, if I were you, I would practice this thing. Her standards are relentlessly high, and there's no excuse for slacking off. Either we do it well or we don't do it at all. I'm known for being a huge disciplinarian, and I've got worse and worse as I've got older, or better and better, depends how you look at it. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's tough. She is a tough lady, I'll give you that. <laughs> but yeah, no, she, she, she's a mother as well. I mean, no mother would be tough on a child if they didn't love the child, so she's incredible. And one. Rosemary never had children of her own, so the orchestra has become something of a family. Not quite as good. Do it again. Three, and she's become something four, of a mother. One. I never sort of wanted to have children for the sake of having children. Yeah, that was nice. I'm not one for sort of feeling maternal towards a baby because it's a baby. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of more interested in the interesting bits, if you know what I mean. One. Now, it's just Fort Sando. Family history plays a big part in why she's here. Rosemary's father was also a brilliant musician, but his early life was bleak. He was given away to an orphanage when he was only three weeks old. All right, what's the problem? And I've often quoted his beginnings mm. to my students, who, you know, many of whom do come from very difficult backgrounds, but I don't think they're as tough as his. Mm. And the other thing is he never, ever moaned about it. He never complained about it. He never said, well, you know, I had a tough start, so I'm excused for this, that, and he just got on with it. Some of the Buscade students already have that raw determination. You can see it in their eyes. 11-year-old Kaketso wants to become one of the best cellists in the country. I mean, she, she, she looks very young, doesn't she? She's very small, but inside, I think there's a very, very iron will. And, you know, she's doing her bit. Kuketso has only been playing the cello for three years, but she's got just what her teachers are looking for, ability, concentration and work ethic. She's probably the most talented child that I've ever taught. And I can see why. Um, the thing about Kaketso is that she's got this combination, apparently, that we were talking about, of being very together and being very talented. We were talking with Rosemary two days ago and she said of all the young cello players that they've had at Buscade, you are the most talented and hardworking. What do you think about that? I think she's speaking the truth. She wants to 
turning the tree because I'm like that. And at school, I'm just like that. Do you feel proud about that? Yes, I do. Koketso lives with her grandmother, Mavis. They don't have much money, but they get by. It's a strong bond. But Koketso said she wants to stay with me because since from birth she was here, I'm the one who was taking care because the mother was still young when she finds Koketso. Grandmother and granddaughter take care of each other. When Mavis's husband died last year, Koketso did her best to ease the grief. I love her very much because, you know, even when his grandfather passed away, she's the one who was consoling me most. You know, sometimes when she come from school, sitting there, maybe I was crying, then when I hear I can just let my tears and mama, why are you crying? Koketso and Mavis share a room and a bed in the tiny house. Many of the children in Buscade still live like this. Grandmothers, or Gogos as they're known in Zulu, are a lifeline in fractured families. And what do you love about your Gogo? What does she do for you and what kind of lady is she? She's very sweet and loving. Mavis wants a better future for Koketso. She had her own education turned upside down by the chaos and violence of the 1976 student uprising. In 1976, I was, I was there. I was there. I was still at school. When you left home to school, you don't know whether you'll be back alive. It was very difficult and sad. Koketso doesn't take school for granted. She's already a prize-winning student who tops her class. Her dream is to attend the Royal Academy of Music in London. I would like to go to university in England too. Do you think you will? I think so. How hard will you need to work to get there? <sighs> very hard, I need to work very, very hard. Mm. What about for you, Mavis, later, if Koketso goes overseas and it sounds like you want her to have a big future, but also you would miss her terribly? Uh, one day I will be dead, I won't go with her to the grave. If the brighter future is coming for her, she must go for it. Mm. Mm. I, I can give her the blessings. Despite all the changes and opportunities, there's still something about life in Soweto that's traditional and conservative. Matapello is grateful for the chances she's had to travel the world with Buscade. We've been to Los Angeles. I think that was my first trip overseas. Um, New York, New Haven. Colombia, Syria, um, Holland, Paris, London, New Zealand. Yeah, I think that's around about. All the years of uncertainty in Soweto have left a layer of caution. Despite Matapello's exquisite voice, her parents insist that she has a career to fall back on. So she's a qualified interior designer. I wouldn't be designing kitchens if I sang like that, I tell you. Well, I know, but, I mean, one thing I know about Matapello, she wouldn't ever wander off into the sort of pop vocal world of, you know, she will always stay rooted in whatever she does. Mm. But I agree with you. I wouldn't be designing kitchens. <laughs> um, yeah, so I do have big dreams, of course, um, having a family of my own and, you know, just instilling those values that my own parents put in, in, um, put in me and as well as what, what Rosemary has, has done for me as well, to share it with, with everybody. 
This is a rare moment of relaxation. Rosemary gets little time to herself. But at the age of 70, she can't imagine her life without Buscade, for better or worse. It's sort of, well, what would life be like, you know, if you couldn't see and then suddenly you could see? It really is like that. Um, it's also brought a lot of stress and pain and anxiety and um, loneliness, I think, because of not being with my friends and my family. It gets hectic a, a lot, so, yeah, we worry about her. Uh, but with Rosemary, you tell her, take it easy. It's like, it's one more thing, I just have to do this. Um, but yeah, no, um, I think she, she's trying now to take it a bit easy, but it's, it's very difficult. This is when all the practice and persistence comes together. It's only a few minutes to go until Buscade's annual community concert in Soweto. I'm an utter perfectionist. I'm a nuisance of a perfectionist. You know, if I listen to a recording of a concert we've done and I hear things and I think, I know that that could have been much better than it was. And I will go on until it is as good as it possibly can be. But on the other hand, in a concert, if something goes wrong, you have to let it Go. You can't focus on that, and that's quite difficult, actually. It's a chance to soar in front of a home crowd. The audience is full of family and friends. Young Kaketso has been called up to play in the senior ensemble. She knows it's a big opportunity. Why are you very serious about school and, and music? Why do you think that is? I, I think it can give me a more brighter future. Two of the senior musicians have already lived out Kaketso's dream and graduated from the Royal Academy of Music in London. A world-class achievement. And I went to their graduation, and I can't tell you, I mean, I, you know, talk about emotion, that, that was, it was a wonderful moment.
These young musicians have boundless talents and opportunities. They're deeply grateful to the woman who believed in their potential. There's something going on, isn't there? There is something going on, and, and it's sort of much bigger than all of us. And it has transformed the lives of quite a number of people. And I think, well, I'm just lucky. It's been hard work, but it just fell, literally, at a particular point in my life, and in their lives, and in the life of this country. Nothing.